The pH of a solution can accurately be measured using a pH meter. If you do a laboratory, you, you usually have a pH that you will measure the solution of something and figure out the pH. And if you want to calculate that concentration of hydronium, you can use the cal um, formula easily to calculate that. There are other ways we can that are less precise and accurate um, determine the pH of something. Uh, we use pH paper. Uh, you have own a pool. You know, you take paper, you dip it in the water, and compare the color code to figure out the pH. We also have universal indicators. We can take an acid base indicator, add some of the solution, and see by the color what's the pH of the solution. Uh, there, uh, a good universal indicator would be red cabbage. If you boil red cabbage and take that juice, it changes color along the whole pH range. If you know what that range is in color, you can test the pH of something to that color code and figure out what the pH of it is. You're familiar with other indicators that are used, uh, say phenolphthalein. You use that typically with an acid-base titration, and it turns pink. Okay, you got to realize that one. It's not a universal indicator because it's only got a small window where it changes color, and that's typically between 8.5 and 10.5 pH units. So typically, after you neutralize the species, okay, reach the equivalence point, one more drop of that titrant or base will kick the pH up in that 8.5 to 10 range, and it turns pink, which tells you to stop. Titrating because you're at the end point. Okay. What I'm going to do now is calculate the pH, hydronium ion, hydroxide, and pOH of a solution. But this is the simplest ca calculations we're going to have. Okay, in the next chapter, think get more complex. So what I want you to do is think about this as a process as you as you do these problems. So I want you to ask yourself some questions as you work through these, because eventually they're going to get harder. Okay, you're going to have to do these calculations as well as other calculations when we get to the next chapter. So the first question I want you to ask yourself when you look at a problem and you're trying to calculate pH, which we're going to do many, many times in the next chapter or so. First question you're going to ask yourself, is it a single solute? Or is it a reaction? Okay, is it a single solute or reaction? If it's a single solute, then it's straightforward and keep on going. If it's a reaction, then you're going to have to do a neutralization process to figure out what's left, figure out new concentrations, and then do what we're doing here. Okay, so that's an important question. Now, naturally, we haven't done any reactions yet. So in this case, yes, it's a single solute. Okay. But my process here is I want you to think about all these problems as they look exactly the same. And the answers to your questions is going to steer you in the direction of how to work it. Okay, you don't want to memorize different procedures. What you want to do is look at it, ask the questions as you go, and let dic that dictate how to work the problem. Okay, so first question, single solute or reaction? Single solute. Second question, is it an acid? Is it a base? Or is it a salt? Okay, acid, base, or salt. Each one of those we're going to handle differently. Okay, well, in this case, it's an acid. HCl is an acid. Okay, if it was a salt, there's other questions we've got to ask. But if it's an acid or the base, then we move on to the next question. Okay, since it's an acid, the next question is, is it strong or weak? If it was a base, same thing, strong or weak. If it's a salt, then we do something else. As I said, we'll talk about that later on in chapters to come. So in this case, HCl, strong or weak acid. Strong acid. Okay. Why is that important to me? Because I know if it's a strong acid, what happens to a strong acid? Breaks up 100%. That's going to make my calculation a lot easier. If it's a weak acid, it doesn't break up 100%. It's less than 5% which means I got an equilibrium expression, which means I'm going to have to do a K problem to solve that before I can move on to calculate the pH. So it's a case of thinking about how this problem is going to have to be attacked. Okay, so strong acid, this is the easiest case. Okay, as I said, next chapter, things will get a little bit more difficult. Okay, so now I know it's a strong acid. My next step will be then to write my reaction, to write my hydrolysis. It's important to do that because it tells you what are your products, but you know what you're looking for, hydronium, hydroxide, whatever. So basically it keeps you in line that you don't make those careless mistakes where you solve for something and call it hydronium and really it's hydroxide. Write the reaction. Take the time and write that hydrolysis. 
which in this case okay Okay, which in this case would be 8Cl plus water gives me hydronium ion and Cl minus. Okay, going back to your Bronsted Lowry um, reaction where your acids donate in the proton and the base taking on the proton. Now we know that this has a 0.1 molar solution of 8Cl, formal concentration of it. But we know that 8Cl is a strong acid, which means it breaks up 100% which means that for every one mole of HCl, I'm forming one mole of hydronium and one mole of Cl minus. So if this breaks up 100%, that means that my HCl will be ionized and formed in how much hydronium? One to one ratio. If I got 0.1 HCl, then how much hydronium will I have? 0.1. I also have 0.1 molarity of Cl minus, but I don't really care about that in this problem because it has no effect on H3O plus, OH minus, pH, or POH. Okay? So this, in essence, is telling me my first answer. This is my hydronium ion concentration. That is one of my answers. That's my first answer I'm looking for. Okay? So it's a strong acid. It's a straightforward calculation. Okay? It's a one-to-one, -one, so if I know the amount of the acid, I know the amount of hydronium ion concentration. Straightforward calculation. If that was a weak acid, it wouldn't be my answer. I would have to do more calculations to figure out the concentration of hydronium. Okay, so now I know my hydronium, what would be next is how do I calculate OH minus? I'm going to go through KW. KW is equal to the hydronium ion concentration times hydroxide. So all I got to do is plug that into here, divide through, which now gets me 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 0.1, which gets me 1 time, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 13th molarity for my hydroxide concentration. So that gets me my second part. Now I want to figure out pH and pOH, so I'll just go ahead and do pH by going straight through my hydronium ion concentration, which is um, pH is equal to the negative log of my hydronium ion concentration, which is equal to a negative log of 0 0.10, which is equal to 1, remember in sig figs, 2 sig figs, so 2 past the decimal. Okay. And to get pOH, I'd go ahead and go through 14. We know that 14 is equal to pH plus pOH, so to track my pH on both sides, which gives me 14 minus 1, which gives me 13. I could have just as easily um, took the OH minus concentration and solved for my POH through the negative log of that, but it seems a little easier. I can do the math a little easier in my head, subtracting from 14 and then doing a the log in my head. So that gives me my pH as well as my POH. But I do want you at this point to ask yourself one more question. And the question is, does this answer make sense? Okay, does it make sense? We're talking about an acid. What kind of pH should I have if I have an acid? Less than 7. My pH, I calculated, was 1. So there's a possibility that I have things correct. If I got the opposite above 7, then I know I don't have a chance of being right. I probably made some mistake. POH, OH, switch something or other. Okay? For example, I would have came up with a pH of 13 that would tell me, hey, I did something wrong. I flip-flopped something. Okay? So just because, <clears throat> so it basically should ask that question to see if it makes sense to have, see if you have a chance of being right. If it's the other way, you know you got it wrong, go find out what you did wrong and fix it. One more calculation. Let's try this one. I'm looking for hydronium hydroxide pH and pOH, the solution prepared by dissolving 10.0 grams of barium hydroxide per liter. Well, the first thing we got to realize is everything we're doing is a concentration base. That's what these brackets mean, that it's concentration based. I'm giving grams, so what do you think the first thing we're going to have to do? Make it into molarity. How do we do that? Correct, through molar mass. So let's do that calculation first. 
concentration of my barium hydroxide would be my 10.0 grams divided by one liter, and then take my molar mass of barium hydroxide, okay, molar mass, which is my 171.3, therefore my grams cancel, and I get 0.058 for molarity. Next step, okay, I want to ask myself those questions. First question, am I talking about a single solute or am I talking about a reaction? I'm talking about a single solute. Next question, acid, base, or salt? It's a base. What kind of base? Strong or weak? Strong base. What does a strong base mean to me? 100% ionization. Okay, means 100% ionization. Straightforward calculation. While it's not as straightforward when we talk about weak stuff. So what's my next step then? Next step, I want to write my reaction. I want to make sure I know what are my products and I know what I'm calculating. So I write my barium hydroxide, ionic bond breaks and gives me barium ions, barium two plus ions, and two hydroxide ions. We know that the concentration, the formal concentration of barium hydroxide is 0 0.0584 molarity. Okay, and that's my barium hydroxide. We know it breaks up 100%. So then how much barium do I have if it's a one-to-one? -one? 0 0.0584 molarity. How much hydroxide do I have? 0.0584 molarity times two. Remember, it breaks up into two ions, so there's a one to two mole ratio between barium hydroxide and hydroxide ion. So my concentration, 0.0584 molarity for barium and two times 0.0584 molarity for hydroxide. Now, I don't really care about the barium. It has no effect on my hydronium hydroxide, pH or POH. But what ha has happened, though, is I got the OH minus concentration directly. All i got to do is multiply two times that value. Now, most of what you're going to do with acid-base stuff is going to be a one-to-one -one mole ratio. The only time you're going to come up with a one-to-two ratio is when you're dealing with those three slightly soluble bases, okay, barium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, and strontium hydroxide. They have very low uh, solubilities, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 molarities. Those are the only ones you're going to come to one and two. Now, we don't tend to use that all, that often because of that monovalent. We prefer to use the monovalent sodium hydroxide and uh, potassium hydroxide. So I can directly calculate my OH minus. Two times 0.0584 gives me 0.117 molarity. So now I have my concentration of my hydroxide ion. From there, I can go many different ways. But what I chose to do from this point is since I had the concentration of OH minus, I decided to calculate the POH. So I'll take my POH is equal to the negative log of my concentration of OH minus. POH is equal to the negative log of OH minus concentration, which is negative log of 0.117, which is 0.932. From there, I can easily calculate pH through my 14. So pH is equal to 14 minus pOH, which is 14 minus 0.932, which gets me 13.07. So now I have pH and I have pOH. All I got left is hydronium ion. I can go through to Kw with OH minus, or I'm going to select in this case, I'll uh, go ahead and do um, <clears throat> my pH. So I'll do my anti-log. So Hydronium ion is equal to 10 to the negative pH, which is 10 to the negative 13.07, which is 8.5 times 10 to the negative 14th molarity, which is my last answer. So I have all my answers. But there's one more thing I want you to do, which is what? Ask yourself, does the, question, does the answer make sense? We're talking about barium hydroxide, which is a base. So my pH should be what? Greater than 7. Okay, greater than 7. What do I get? My pH is 13.07. That's greater than 7, so I have a chance of being correct. If I didn't, if I got a pH less than 7, then there's no chance I'm correct. Okay, so 
I want to check that last little bit to make sure that my answer makes sense, that I didn't make any careless mistakes, flip-flopping, OH, POH, PH, etc. Homework 27. That deals with calculating the pH of strong acids and strong bases. Now realize this is the start of calculating pH. This is, this is the easy part. This is where we're basically walking. When we get to the next section, we'll be running because we're going to have to do calculations of Ka, Kb to figure out the concentration of hydronium hydroxide and then figure out the pH. Okay, These are a little bit easier because they're strong, so we can figure out the concentration of OH- minus or hydronium ion uh, directly from the concentration of the acid or base given.